Tackle Junkies, what's going on, fellas? We'll appreciate you guys clicking on the video. In today's video, we're talking soft plastics for the Ultimate Tackle Bag Series. Episode 5, stay tuned. Like I said, guys, we'll appreciate you guys clicking on the video. If you guys have not subscribed to the channel yet, definitely consider subscribing. Don't forget to ring that bell, that way you guys are notified every time I release a new video. Smash the thumbs up, leave some comments down below. You guys know the drill on that one. Now we're going to hop into today's video. If you guys have been following the channel, you'll know we've been building the Ultimate Tackle Bag. As of right now, we've got four episodes down. You're watching the fifth one on soft plastic, but the first one was on terminal tackle using the Edge Terminal Box. Remember guys, code TJ81 over there at Mustad gets you guys 20% off, okay? So terminal box was number one. Second box was the Edge Flex Box for our spinner bait and buzz bait storage. This box turned out great. From there, we had just the regular 3600 series edge box for our hard baits, and we use the same box for our jigs, okay? And like I said, next up is soft plastics. Now, the last video that I did was kind of a tour of all of my soft plastics, okay? And the point of that video is just kind of let you guys know, you know, a bunch of different options that are available, but it can be a bit overwhelming for the beginner. So in today's video, we're going to simplify that, you know, for the pond hopper, the guys just starting with fishing, you know, you don't want to confuse yourself and give yourself too many options over there at the ponds or wherever you're fishing at when you're first getting started. You know, less is better. You don't need every style of bait. You don't need every single color. We're going to go through um, what you need in today's video. Keeping it simple, but we'll make sure you have enough you know, to catch fish as well. So anyways, guys, I think what we're going to do is just grab a little, grab a little cart here, strap on the GoPro, and we're going to go shopping. All right, fellas, one of the first things I want to do is grab my terminal box and my jig box. Okay. Open them up and see exactly what I packed in here as far as jig heads go, skirt colors, hook styles, and all that, so I kind of know what baits I'm going to need. So... You know, we got some EWG, some round bent offsets. We do have some swim bait hooks in here, so we know we need some swim baits for sure. You know, some creature baits and worms. As far as our jigs go, you know, we got some swim jigs, some finesse jigs, chatter baits. You guys should have seen the skirt options that I packed. You know, crawfish type patterns, you know, black and blue shad patterns. So pretty basic on that. But we have an idea here of what we need to grab now for our soft plastics. And to be honest, guys, you know, a Senko has probably caught more fish than every other bait style combined. So we're going to start with the Senko. It's a fantastic, you know, um, beginner type bait. But even if you're an experienced angler, I mean, nobody can deny that a Senko catches fish. We're going to grab the Lunker Logs over here as well. Now, I did a review on the Guggen baits. You guys want to see that, I'll link it down below. But these are a pretty solid soft plastic, okay? And for the price that you can get them at over there at Carl's, we're going to go this route with our green pumpkin and our black and blue. Let's see where are they at. White. So we got some green pumpkin here and black and blue. Like I said, over there at Carl's, these are always like 20% off if you are a member. So it's a pretty decent bait for the price over there at Carl's. And like I said, green pumpkin, black and blue, you truly cannot beat those colors. You know, we're trying to keep it simple here. Another thing that you can do instead of carrying a bunch of different colors, if you do want more options, is get yourself some dye. You know, I carry this little box here on my boat. I keep little dye markers in my bag. You know, we got chartreuse in here, some JJ's Magic. We got just a clear for some scent, methylate, red, blue. You know, this will give you a lot of options. You can just keep it simple with your soft plastic colors. And like I said, you have plenty of options here with the dye to trick out your baits. And like I said, though, a Senko works so well. I do want one more option. There's a lot of bluegill in the ponds that I fish. So I like a bluegill color as well. And we will go with the brim color in the Yum Dingers. I mean, you can get away with the green pumpkin with a little bit of chartreuse dye. But again, I have a lot of confidence in this color here. So we're going to pack that one as well. So we got green pumpkin, we got black and blue, and then we got the brim color, Yum Dinger. Again, these are very affordable as well. Hard to beat the Dinger for the price. All right, next up, let's talk, you know, beaver style bait. Okay, I like a beaver style bait 
you know, when the water's colder, or if you're on pressured water, you know, there's, they don't have a ton of action. They're not really, you know, too invasive, like, let's say like a vile craw or a rage craw. Again, you still get some action with these, but it's not really overwhelming. Again, great in cold water. So for our beaver type baits, we're going to go with the vile bug here in Bama craw. Then I think we're going to go with uh, black and blue as well. Again, you can't really beat these colors here. So you got a darker color here, and then you got your more natural type color here in black and blue, and then your Bama craw. So now the vile bug, like I said, doesn't have a whole lot of action. Now we want something with some more action for, you know, when the water is warmer, fish are more active. Okay, let's go with some, let's go with some rage craws. I'm not sure what colors I all have over here. Crawdaddy's a good one. Here we go, green pumpkin. You know what though? Let's mix it up a little bit. Let's go back over here to the box. I know I have some different colors in here. Like I said, we're shopping, guys. This is no different than going to Bass Pro. You go up and down the aisles, remember something that you wanted to look at. So it's kind of what we're doing here. We're just kind of winging it. And here we go. We do have some more Rage Craws in here. All right. How about we go... I like this one here, Summer Craw, which is like a green pumpkin base. A little bit of chartreuse in there. And then let's go June Bug. Again, a darker color, more natural type color. Now, I mean, I'm a big fan of throwing craws. Again, there's a bunch of different styles you can see, you know, from biffle bugs and different creature baits and hogs and things like that. But a craw, you know, and really a tube as well. We're not gonna pack any tubes, but a craw I feel you can make really look like whatever you want. You know, if you're, you get like a, a bluegill imitation type color, you can swim it, it looks like a bluegill. You can drag them on the bottom to make them look like a craw. If you get a white one and swim it, it can look like a shad. You know, a craw is a very versatile type bait. So we're going to stick with pretty much all craws. And nobody's going to argue that a pit boss is not a great option. I mean, it's a fantastic option here. We're not going to go with a green haze. Yeah, let's go, here we go. Big Texan, which is somewhat of a natural type color. And of course, the black and blue. So again, we got black and blue our dirtier water color. Okay, and then we have the big Texan, which is like, you know, a darker green pumpkin. It's got a bit of orange in it as well. I'm gonna say it's just a really good looking crawdad type color. Pretty natural looking. So from there, let's go to swim baits, okay? We know we have some swim jigs in our box here. We got some swim jigs in here, black and blue and white. Those are always big players over there at the ponds. And again, we do have some chatter baits in here. Okay, it's kind of going through my colors again. Let's go with a white swim bait. That's hard to beat on the back of a swim jig here. Let's go with just a four inch exo swim. And that can be, like I said, rigged on the swim jigs or it can be, you know, rigged alone. i tell you what, we can also go through our terminal box real fast just to show you guys. No, actually, I guess it would be in the jig box here. Okay, so in the jig box here, of course, we have our underspins and our jig heads in here. So we can thread that swim bait on there. We have some ball heads in here. Okay, we do have some scrounger heads in here as well. You guys can see that, some scrounger heads. Okay. And we do have some new tech jigs as well. Like I told you guys, I like just to put a swim bait or a grub on these as well and swim those around or even drag them around. So we can really use the four inch swim bait here for a lot of different options with our terminal tackle. So we're going to stick with this one here. Then we need something darker for our black swim jig. Really hard to beat the Rage Menace here. We'll go with a black and blue Rage Menace. And again, this can be doubled up as a, a regular jig trailer. It can be put on a ball head, you know, chatterbait trailer if you want that type of action. I mean, there's many different options for a bait like this as well. We want a standalone swim bait. Majority of the ponds that we're fishing do have bluegill in them. So we're going to go for a bluegill type color here. How about the sun gill? Okay, a little bit bigger as well. And we do have some five aught swim bait hooks in our box. So these will work out perfect for that. Okay, so let's grab one more four inch kind of bluegill imitator. And you can't beat this one right here as well. Green pumpkin pearl. 
Okay, so that gives us a couple more options. Like I said, swim jig trailers or whatever. And you guys know, if you guys have been around for a while, when I'm throwing my chatter baits, I don't like, you know, I don't like to throw a boot tail on there. You know, when you have a slower, wider wobble of your plastic and a real fast vibration of that blade, the two actions really interfere with each other and the bait really doesn't work all that well. So when I'm throwing a chatterbait, I like the blade to give the action to the trailer. So I usually pick a trailer with really no action. So if I'm going to use this, if I just want the bulk, I'll cut that boot off, okay? So that's an option as well. But you guys know that I do love a plasma tail as a trailer on my chatterbaits. And for my shad type chatterbaits, we're gonna go with this one right here, fluorescent shad. We're going to go with uh, a June bug just because I love that phantom, that purple phantom color right here. And this is a just a fantastic combo right here. So definitely going to go with that one as well. Again, dirtier water. This will be for our clearer water, shad type bait, dirtier water. A couple different options there. So we are covered on that. So we're going to throw these here in the basket. Let's go ahead and grab a 6.5 in the black and blue. And then let's go with the green pumpkin plasma. Okay. Again, darker color, more natural color. But what I can do with these as well is I can cut these down. So these can be Chatterbait trailers as well, or shaky heads, Nico rig, you know, you could even wacky rig these two if you wanted to. Then let's go with some, gotta have a ribbon tail worm. Okay, how about something for dirtier water here? Let's go with, let's go with the culprit seven inch Fat Max red shad. Now we need a natural type color. Let's go a little bit longer here for summertime fishing. Exo ribbon green pumpkin. That will do the job right there. So as far as all this goes, I think really all we need is some Ned baits and like I said, some finesse jig trailers. This one should be all of our Ned rig stuff. And guys, there's a lot in this bag here. I don't know if you guys realize really how many packs are in here. Let's go ahead and take them all out. Okay, so our finesse jigs, we got a black and blue in there. We got some orange, we got a green pumpkin and all that. Plus we want some, you know, Ned rig type plastic. So what we could do is, I say we go black and blue here in the TRD, okay? That's great for, like I said, the little finesse jig here. That little killer on there. And then of course we can use this with our Ned heads. So gotta have the black and blue. We need a natural color here. Again, there's some green pumpkin type finesse jigs and all that in here. Let's go with the, uh, the TRD bugs and hot snake. Get a natural type color, all right? Again, great for the Ned head or the little finesse jigs. Let's grab one more, something a little bit different. How about a little bitty crawfish or something? We do have some orange in there. What do we got here? Might be able just to throw something like what is this California craw, green pumpkin. Ooh, this one here could be good. That one was called like burnt orange or something in here. Oh yeah, that could look really, really good, fellas. What do you think of that? I'm thinking that will be the freaking deal right there, man. Yep, we're gonna go that route. Okay, so we do have, like I said, a green pumpkin-ish type color in the bugs, the black and blue TRD, and then we got the finesse TRD in the green pumpkin orange. And you can't go anywhere without some Sakushi bugs. But I tell you what, I know my son's going to have plenty of these on him. So we're just going to grab, uh, I think just a straight green pumpkin, Sakushi bug. And while we're here, and it's hard not to grab a, a Yoda worm, you know, white. This one here is good too though. Electric shad. Let's just go with white though. We go with white, keeping it simple. Like I said, I can always get some dye on here with a little art and swab, put some blue on there if I want it to look like electric shad or whatever. So, but I think a white would about do it. So here's what we have. Guys, I'm thinking really, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of stuff in there. It's about a half a cart full there, about a half a cart. But if you look at everything that was in this room, you know, compared to what we picked, I mean, we really did narrow it down. You know, like I said, less is more at the ponds. We don't need too many options, but we still have quite a few options here. So let's go with our trailers here. So we have the Yoda worm, 
And then we do have the Axle Swim, both white, like I said, but two different styles here. Okay. And then for our bluegill imitators, we got the four inch and the four eight. Okay. Again, a couple of different lengths there, different scents as well. Okay. And we also have our straight tail worms here, which again is for, you know, Nico rig, shaky head. These can be cut down for a Chatterbait trailer as well. Then we have more of our plasma tails here. I mainly got these two colors for my Chatterbait trailers. You know, my shed type color here. And then this one here is for the purple phantom. I absolutely love that color. Ton of confidence in it, had to get that one there. But again, these can be used for a drop shot or, you know, a little wacky rig or whatever as well. Okay, small shaky head. Then we have our Senkos. You can't go anywhere without a Senko. You know, green pumpkin, black and blue, and the brim color there, okay? And again, like I said, wacky rigs, weighted wacky rig, weightless or weighted Texas rig, pitch and flip them. I mean, those are a very versatile bait as well. Then we do have our craws in here. And we got the most of these, but again, a craw is very versatile. We have our rage craws. Again, when the water is warmer, the fish are more active, June bug, and then the green pumpkin chartreuse there. Then we do have our creature type bait, the pit boss, again, black and blue, more of a natural type color here, big Texan. And then we do have our beaver type baits. Again, when we don't want a ton of action or you're on pressured water or water's cold or whatever the case may be, you know, black and blue, Bama Craw, great choices there. Okay, that's the vile bugs. And then we have, let's see here, where'd our other worm go? Here it is. Our worms, again, great when the water's warmer as well. Summertime, the culprit Fat Max 7 inch in red shad, XO ribbon here, and green pumpkin. Again, we have our darker color and more natural color as well. Okay. And then we did grab some menaces. Again, great for, like I said, a swim jig trailer. You know, just a regular jig trailer. You can even put these on a charity bait if you'd like. Drag them around on the new Tech Lures new jig. And then for our finesse fishing, you know, finesse jig trailers, net heads and all that, we do have this Cushy Bug, Green Pumpkin, TRD Bugs here, Hot Snakes, a couple different uh, profiles there, all right, but natural colors. And then we got the TRDs here, Green Pumpkin Orange and the Black and Blue, again, on the Ned Rig or trailers for the finesse jig. So again, we have a nice variety here and more than enough plastics to go with all the terminal and jigs that we packed. So let's give it a quick count here. How many bags do we have? You guys kind of tell me how many bags you guys pack as well. We'll just kind of see where I'm at. But you guys can see though, with everything that I packed here, I mean, I really did slim it down compared to really what I would pack in my boat. And there's more than enough options here to catch fish. But we have one, two, we have three, four, okay. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, okay, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, and I forgot about frogs. That bag is right here, so we're at 24, and then we got some frogs here, I tell you what, gotta have the green pumpkin chartreuse rage toad, I love this one here, okay? Normally I would probably grab like this color and a black, but I mean, this is the one I throw 90% of the time, so green pumpkin chartreuse, we'll get it done there, and then we'll go ahead and grab a couple little of the ribbit frogs here, that again, I can go ahead and rig, stand alone if I want a smaller profile, but I really do like these here as a trailer on my uh, my buzz baits. So again, white and black, pretty much the only two colors you need for top water fishing. If I had a third, it would be a chartreuse belly. Those three right there is pretty much what I pick for my top waters. So that should do it. It's a 24, what are we at 25, 26, 27 packs, something like that, guys. Let me know what you guys normally pack. Let me know if I'm in the ballpark, but you know, no reason at all that I can't catch fish you know, pretty much wherever I go on what's in this little basket here. And I don't really believe it's too much. We'll see how it gets packed up in the bag. 
If we have to eliminate a few things, we will, but I can always carry, you know, a little speed bag on the side, which is what's nice. You know, I can put 15, 20 bags in here, plus carry my tackle bag. Might even be able to strap this to my tackle bag, you know, so that'll work out as well. But I do believe what's in this card here, we'll get her done. Well, fellas, hopefully you guys enjoyed the little shopping trip. You know, I don't feel like overpacked. I feel like I got enough in here to catch fish no matter where I go. And I have plenty of different options. And like I said, worst case, I can carry some dye with me to spice up my base a little bit if I need to. But for the most part, guys, I feel I'm pretty set with what's in the cart right here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the thumbs up. And like I said, leave me some comments down below on really how many baits that you like to pack when you head to the ponds or just your local lake. So anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Smash the thumbs up. Love you guys. We'll see you guys on the next one.